Flat pedals in the mountain biking world is a never ending topic of discussion. Should you ride flats or clipless? Which one is better? And what is the difference? There are tons of questions, but in today's video, we're gonna tackle a very simple question. How do you ride flats properly? And tips for beginners or newcomers to flat pedals, or maybe you're just downright bad at riding them. This is the main reason why I wanted to do Rattlesnake Ridge over to Before we get deep down into the topic, here's a quick rundown of benefits due to proper foot placement on flat pedals. One, better overall bike control. Two, easier bails. Number three, more opportunity for tricks. And number four, Sam Hill potential. And now let's talk about the negatives of improper use of flat pedals. Number one being worse bike control and balance. Number two, and one of the most important reasons is injury. You'll definitely be experiencing more slips and falls with your foot and improper placement on the flat pedals. And number three is slower riding and bad rotations in your pedal stroke. This could cause bad habits and more pain in your body that you don't need. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the discussion, if you like this video so far, just hit that like button. It will really help out this video and gain some more interest in this community. And if you have any other comments, questions, or concerns, maybe you just want to join in on the discussion, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to each and every one of you. So let's get into it. Oh yeah, and if you want to, you could subscribe if, you, if you'd like. So when you're choosing a new bike, whether it's your first or newest, it'll likely come with a low end pedal or maybe no pedals at all, depending on the type of bike. My first tip is to replace the stock pedals to something with more grip. Now some bikes come with a decent flat pedal that are nylon and have molded pins, but even these will get worn out because those pins are actually molded into the design and they won't last forever. So eventually they will get worn out and just go completely flat and there will be no grip on these pedals. With pedals like the Raceface Chesters, you can actually adjust the pins and replace them when necessary because they're metal. They are the pedal I recommend for all riders, whether you're new to flat pedals or you're a veteran. Even before we get on the bike, mistakes can be made. So let's talk about those first. Shoes is a huge mistake and it's on the top of my list for the do's and don'ts in mountain biking. Do not ride the trail in Nike runners. I've seen it a million times and we've all been there. Left the house and forgot our riding shoes or maybe just thought it was a good idea to use Nike runners because they're athletic gear and, and you just think that they're a good place to start since they're Nikes and they'll work on the trail. Well, there is a reason they're sold in a different department at the store or location altogether. It's one thing to wear them in a pinch, but learning in these shoes will only create bad habits and potential injury. The main reasons you don't want to wear runners while riding is support. These shoes are meant to be extremely light. They offer no support to the foot while on a pedal. The sole of the shoe will deform around the pedal and create an uneven balance point. This creates potential for injury. Not only is the shoe unsupportive, but the upper portion of the shoe is paper thin. If you take any spill or drag a toe, the trail will tear right through the shoe and into your skin. Lastly, the bottom of the shoe is usually a soft foam, and if you're using pedals with pins, that soft foam on the bottom will be ripped apart and you'll ruin your shoes. So having the proper supportive shoe with a heavy duty rubber sole and supportive exterior will create a positive connection on the pedal and from that point we could work on form and foot placement. My recommended shoe if you're not interested in mountain bike specific shoes right away and you don't want to spend that money, you're not really sure if you want to commit to the sport, you can always get a nice pair of skateboard shoes like the Vans Old School Pro or the Skate High. And if you don't stick with mountain biking, you'll still have a nice pair of casual shoes that you can wear day to day. MTB specific shoes can be pretty pricey, so it's understandable if you don't want to jump the gun on buying some of those, but Giro makes some budget friendly options and 510 is a standard shoe brand on the trail. Now let's get on the bike. The only true way to practice these techniques is to get out on the trail. 
preferably a flat fire road or a pedestrian trail, or even better, your neighborhood. This way you'll have a safe, consistent place to practice. The number one biggest issue is foot placement. That's not really a shocker. It will be the majority of what I discuss in this episode because it's the number one issue I see with most riders, and when corrected, most other bad habits disappear with time and practice. Now this isn't going to be an overnight success. Expect to be practicing for months before you get really solid with flat pedals. Cami actually has some experience in this, and if you want to see a video with her talking about how she's overcome riding with flats and what bad habits she's actually battled with, then please let me know because that'd be a pretty cool video and I think it would be awesome to see the progress. Okay, let's get back to the topic. And here's the quick answer. Central foot placement on the pedal is bad. Toe placement on the pedal is good. So what am I talking about here? Let's take a look at a flat pedal and check out two different approaches to foot placement. Can you tell which one is incorrect? Yeah, you got it right. Very good. I'd reckon that 50% of riders feel natural one way or the other, and that means 50% of riders are likely to have preventable injuries. A perfect example of this is Cami. She was in the 50% of riders that felt natural with her foot centered on the pedal. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to ride like that. You just have to overcome the awkward feeling of keeping your toes over the center point of the pedal rather than the center of your foot. I know it's kind of confusing to hear, but I'm, I'm going to be demonstrating with photos so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. Placing your foot in the middle of the pedal is not proper foot placement. There are times when this placement is acceptable, like steep climbs and when you need to power through something, but that's a completely different argument. If you notice, my foot in the middle of the pedal is more likely going to drag on the trail like this. Now imagine going down a technical trail and dealing with this same issue. When the foot is placed in the middle of the pedal, your body weight is centered right below you, and all your weight can be shifted off the pedal with a small strike to the crank arm or the front wheel. This is a good example of inertia and friction. Friction being the part whenever you fall and hurt yourself, so let's try to avoid that. I see riders constantly being bucked off their bike with gashes in the back of their calves or on the shins because their weight distribution on the center of the pedal creates easier point of failure. Now, why does that happen? Think about it like this. The center of the pedal is a balance point, much like a fulcrum point or a seesaw because the pedal itself can spin freely. With all the weight of your body on the center of the point, all it takes to tip the scale is a small disruption in the balancing act. Now, my science may not be 100% accurate, but let's use this same analogy with foot placement on the toe. That means the lever of the fulcrum point has been lengthened in one direction, meaning the amount of effort to create failure of this point would be nearly tripled the weight of your body. Theoretically, that's what I've come up with. Simply put, when you position your toe central on the pedal, rather than putting your foot directly in the middle of the pedal, your weight is shifted back off the center of the balancing point and distributed between your seat, bars, and pedals. It allows you more control over your entire bike because your weight is being shifted through three points instead of one. When your body weight, in this scenario, your foot, is central on the pedal, all the control through your bars and seat will be that much harder to utilize because all the weight of your body will be shifting into one of the three positions very abruptly rather than in a controlled execution, due to your foot being on the balancing point of the pedal. If anyone has a more scientific way of explaining this, or an easier way of explaining this, or any other arguments slash opinions, please comment and let me know, because I'd love to hear from them. So to wrap this up, let's talk again about why placing the center of your foot in the middle of the pedal is bad. It creates a harder balance point due to more body weight on the pedals. It doesn't allow for smooth rotations of the pedals. You're more likely to crash from foot slips, and in my opinion, it looks bad. I could usually spot a person who rides flat-footed or is used to riding clips. And why is toe placement better? Well, better bike control and balance is going to be a huge factor once you get this right. Agility and speed again comes with proper rotation of the pedal and your toe being more flexible than the middle of your foot 
allows for a, a more efficient and cleaner rotation of that pedal arm or crank arm. And you have more opportunities for tricks since you're not locked into your pedals. And obviously you're gonna prevent a lot more injuries if you have proper foot placement like this. And that's going to be it for this part of how to ride flat pedals. If you wanna see more videos like this and you enjoyed this style, please comment down below and let me know. If you have any ideas, concerns, or discussion topics that you think might help this video or might help somebody else, just, just start a discussion down below. I'll make sure to get back to you. Don't forget to get out there and create your own adventure however you can today. Spread some positivity. I'll see you on the next one.